Did you guys ever play the game MASH when you were little? You know, where you have like two options for who you want to marry, where you want to live, which you want your car to be, etc. And then the writer writes down their opinions on who you should marry, what you're gonna drive, etc. And at the end, they somehow calculate it by like counting or something. And then they like tell you your future, like, sorry, but you're gonna live in your grandma's basement and you're gonna have a pet, JJ, and you're gonna drive a motorized toilet, but you do get to marry TJ from recess. Well, anyway, when it came to the dream car section, I'd always say an RV or a pink Barbie limo. But since I already have two RVs, nowhere to put a limo, and gas prices are nuts, a Prius will do nicely. Many moons ago, I painted my very first car pink. It was a rundown, decrepit 89 Buick that my grandma left me. But the brakes went out and I couldn't afford to fix them. So the city zoning people made, made me get rid of it because it's illegal to have a non-drivable car in view of passersby or something. Which I said, the Eiffel Tower doesn't have working brakes. It's non-drivable. But we let that sit there. Why? Probably because French zoning laws aren't as harsh. I feel like the city zoning committee should have a more accurate title, like the Karen Association. Although I try not to promulgate that phraseology because one of my favorite people in the world is named Karen. You get the point. I had to sell my precious baby to some demolition derby guys for 150 $50. That's the best I could get. After that, I forgot all about my dream to have a pink car. Until one evening. I was on a drive playing Would You Rather with one of my close friends. Would you rather have $100 or a little house? Um, $100 because you can buy a house with the $100. That's a good point. Would you rather be a nerd or a popular girl? I guess a popular girl. What about you? Probably a nerd because they're smart. You are so wise. Would you rather have $100 or $1 every day for the rest of the year? $100. Well, actually, only $1 per day. Because you can get, like, $10,000, maybe. How many days are in a year? 100. I didn't know that. Would you rather wear red for the rest of your life or do your eye a place? Probably red for the rest of my life. Now what you see in this clip is me noticing several unique looking cars lining Main Street. I was perplexed for a minute before I remembered, oh yeah, this is that impromptu car show that several of the self-proclaimed rednecks from my city put on sporadically throughout the summer. They line the sides of Main Street with their custom painted trucks, heavy laden with couches in the back. Couches that they recline on while watching sports cars do burnouts all night. I decided I wanted to be part of the action. I wanted a car worthy of showing off on Redneck Road, but of course, with a Barbie flare. Would you rather have a pink car or a pink? So it was settled. Now meet Monica. Monica is a 2008 Prius that I got for $3,000 off of Facebook Marketplace after I wrecked her predecessor, Phoebe, and then rode her subsequent predecessor, Rachel, through a river. It came with like some windshield stickers that I didn't totally love, and then this uh, mess that they left behind. They left behind all of this fabric, and they left behind all of my old clothes and this baby doll that I named Hatred when I was five. Now, an important thing to remember when you're painting your car is that this is basically a terrible idea, but any content, I want to paint car, so I have to paint it myself. Step one, sanding. Fun fact, when I painted my first car, my father insisted that I not use an electric sander, but instead do the whole thing by hand. I can only assume that his reasoning involved me building character, but the experience made me overdose on character, and that's why I am the way I am today. So one really positive thing that I just learned is that electric sanders are really good at removing bird poop, so I'm definitely gonna have to keep that in mind, clean my floors. Hi, I'm Nighttime Makara, an older, wiser version of Morning Makara, whom I'm about to have a conversation with. Are you feeling jittery? No, not really. Are you lacking in focus? No lack of focus here. Do you suffer crippling anxiety? Mom, call me back when you get this and let me know you're okay. I just stepped on a crack. Anxious? No. Why? Did you know your morning coffee could be making those problems worse? But I can't just give up coffee. It's what our whole culture is based upon. Some people make it their only personality trait. Besides, is there any alternative? <laughs> there is. Meat mud water, coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. Or if you're British, herbs. A drinkable ritual which addresses mind, body, and soul. As versatile as your morning coffee, but without the anxiety and midday crash. Mud water can be made in a variety of ways. Make it a latte, or add a spoonful to some hot water. Whatever your preference. I like to blend mine with milk, ice, and a little creamer. With one seventh of the caffeine you find in a cup of coffee, you can get energy any time of day or night without impacting your sleep. Mud water is great for focus, so you can start your day by beating an old man at chess. I've really enjoyed making mud water part of my morning routine. Mud water kindly sent me their starter pack, which includes a 30 serving tin of mud, USB rechargeable frother, whose replacement frothy things, what would you call these? With replacement froth heads and a free sample of their vegan coconut cream. Mud ingredients include cacao, lion's mane, chaga, and cordyceps, which offers a huge range of benefits, including helping your mood, focus, physical performance, and your immune system. It's 100% USDA certified organic non GMO, which, contrary to popular belief, does not stand for Good Morning Ontario. Mm, tastes like a mother's warm hug after many hours of crying and chai tea. It's plant-based, whole 30, gluten-free, gluteus maximus free, and kosher. Plus, the tins are recyclable, so if my dad ever dies, which he won't, I could put his ashes in here. Say no more. How do I get some for myself? Try mud water today and get 15% off your starter kit by following the link in my description and using the code Makara.
Thanks, Mudwater. Now, before we go much further, I would like to address the word redneck. I took a little survey on Instagram and found out that people who don't live in the U.S. have a very different connotation of the word than people in the U.S. I should explain that here, at least in the Midwest, it's actually not often used as an indicator of wealth or status, but more so a list of interests. And after recently conversing with many self-identifying rednecks, I concluded that the core tenets of redneckism seem to be love of trucks, love of fishing, love of hunting, not caring what others think of you, and of course, scrappiness, i.e. fixing things with duct tape, uh, none of which relate to me or my car in the slightest, except maybe that one. So I will never fit in with that crowd and I don't know why I ever even used that word in the first place. I don't know, maybe out of a desire for belonging, community, I don't really have real friends. Just kidding, I love and appreciate you JJ and Courtney. Once you think you're done sanding your car, hose it off to reveal any unsanded shiny spots. Really hope this isn't a federal offense. Please do not call the FBI on me. Once the sanding is over and the dust is settled, you can hang out with your bird outside again. Come here! No, you, come on! Do not cuss at me. Then maybe you'll go to someone's house where a woman is breast pumping for her baby, and then she asks if you want to try it, and you don't want to be rude, so you try it. And the fact that it tastes really good actually makes you feel more disturbed than if it would have been gross. That's disgusting! Yeah. It it's made for humans, Bella. When you're babies! I do have to admit, dipping a cookie in it was a little more than I would do. After that, maybe you'll go home and watch a crime documentary with your favorite brother-sister duo. Before you know it, it's bedtime, and then the next morning. Hi, boy. Step two, Bondo. I love saying Bondo. Before applying the Bondo, thoroughly clean the area with the tack cloth. Now my dad here is gonna mix up the Bondo because he's been doing Bondo for years. He's got a reputation for this. They all call him John Bondo B. So this is the Bondo, and this is the hardener. You mix a little hardener with the Bondo. Depend on how much you put in there. It can be a few minutes to 10 days. I'm just kidding. Oh. Now this isn't uh, a just kidding channel. This is strictly educational channel. You can probably use that as foundation. Now we're filling in this area here because the previous owners left it with some nicks and dents. But I didn't really mind them because the cosmetic damage was part of what made this car so cheap. Here you will see me testing three different types of primer, and here you will see my dad inadvertently dropping the sickest dance move ever. The three different primer colors I tested were red, white, and wait for it, Gray. We should just hold the spray paint stationary and have someone drive back and forth. It's kind of weird that people say watching paint dry is boring. After I did, I went over all three primers with pink. I definitely think the middle color was the best. So I unpainted the gray and red primer and went with white. Step three, taping. Pretty self-explanatory. Tape up everything you don't want painted. Now you'll notice I taped over and sometimes blurred out my license plate. This is not to prevent stalkers. No, take it from me, the determined ones always find a way. I only did it because otherwise every single comment and DM for the next week would be about how my license plate is showing. This way, your time is freed up and you can instead leave a comment about your favorite part of this video. Now I'm sure you're wondering what top of the line auto parts store I went to to get my car paint. Walmart. It's just regular spray paint. Which seems to have shocked and bothered some of the people that I've told, but you know, what rhymes with judge it? Budget. My favorite part of this Walmart trip was coming back to my dad's car, where Garyon was waiting for us patiently, albeit very loudly. Once I returned home, it was time to paint and also share opinions that no one asked for. Like that buying a brand new car from a dealership is one of the strangest financial decisions a person can make. Aside from going to a private college and majoring in pop culture. Side note, I really liked the pants that I was wearing in this next clip, but in hindsight, not so great. Anyway, did you know that brand new cars are way faster than used cars? When it comes to depreciation rate, by the end of its first year, a brand new car will have lost 40% of its value, 60% after three years. So if someone pays $40,000 for a brand new car, drives about 10,000 miles a year for three years, then they will have lost $24,000 that they can never get back. Compare that to my car, which I got for $3,000 three years ago, which I know that is a really unrealistic deal these days. In three years, it's somehow doubled in value. And I know, you want something that's going to last. Well, you could get a newer used car, but take into consideration that if someday I have to change the brakes, the battery, and the engine, which would make it run like new again, I'd only be out four to $6,000. Not fixable and I have to sell it to some demolition derby guys for a hundred bucks, I'll only be out $2,900 compared to $24,000. But thankfully, after three years of driving my car, I really haven't had any issues with it except someone stole my catalytic converter and now it's super loud. Not him, it just happened to zoom in right at that point. So all that to say, if someone makes you feel bad because you haven't had and might never have a brand new car, well, you can tell them, <coughs> uh, tell them not to. It's mean. And if someone ever makes you feel bad for buying a new car, I'm sorry, it was probably me just a few seconds ago. I promise it's not my intention to diss anyone's decision, but if there's any chance that me saying this could deter one person from incurring crippling debt. Yeah, if you're spray painting your car. It's good to take breaks from the fumes. I took a break to watch Joe coach a little league baseball team. Now, I don't know if it's like this in every city, but in our city, the teams are named after local businesses that sponsor them. Joe's team is sponsored by a local funeral home. Can't spell funeral without fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who shouted that out. I thought it was super inappropriate. Oh, what's a funeral home? It's where if people just died, they go there and help the dead people do? Yeah. Hmm. The more you know. What a somber reminder that we need to paint our cars because we only have so much time in this life and only so many chances to do fun things before we kick the bucket.
But full disclosure, I do believe in heaven, so you could just wait and paint your car there. Name that song. I the tiger. And that's right, we just high-fived, because kissing is for ants. Uh oh, don't even act like I didn't see what just happened. There was a storm. Now the rain stole most of the day away from us, but we can still be productive because when the rain stopped, so does the, not the grind don't stop, not the grind, the grind never stops. Well, things are a little bit damp, the air is kind of eerie. Update, it's starting to rain. <laughs> Cover your car with a tarp. Your back's gonna hurt from hunching over for so many days in a row. Many days in a row. Your back's gonna hurt from hunching over for so many days in a row. Many days. You good? And now you've soothed your muscles and washed your clothes. That's what I call killing two birds with one stone. Or as Peter would like us to say it, feeding two birds with one stone. Speaking of killing birds, you may have noticed Garyan's not in this video that much. The sad fact is that we're dealing with spray paint, and when dealing with spray paint, I don't let him within like hundred feet of me. But if it makes you feel better, he is in my license. Picture. Story time. I got my driver's license last week with a bird tucked in my dad's sweatshirt. The operation went perfectly and no one in the lobby ever found out Garion was even there because even though he did, for whatever reason, start laughing, his laugh sounds very human-like so my dad and I just laughed to cover it up. Right before it's my turn, we stealthily slipped him into my jacket. I lucked out and had the world's nicest DMV worker taking my picture. When I asked if my bird could be in my picture, she just looked puzzled, but as he crawled out of my jacket and onto my shoulder, she smiled and said, that just tickles me. Let's finish this thing. I was not even close to being finished. Just so you know, I have shorts on under the skirt. If you paint your car, which I know you will, make sure to do it in a garage where you won't have bugs falling on wet paint. But wait, don't do it in a garage. That could fumes. 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 So anyway, he does work for this bird god. Bird god? Yeah. He wakes up and there's all the sand because he forgets what he's doing. So he puts the sand at the bed. He locks all his doors. It's real weird. And this is someone you know? Yeah. Finally taking shape. What's that? Oh, thank you for asking. Yes, the worst part of this project was painting the roof. Actually, maybe it was the repeated trips to stores to get more spray paint. There was never enough in stock, so I had to go back the next week and then the next week. So I branched out and started going to stores other than Walmart. Then I started going to Walmarts and other cities. Wait, the worst part of is editing this video because I have horrible time management and I put it off till the last minute and now I'm pulling an all-nighter. Yes, I stayed up all night the night before you're seeing this video, unless of course you're seeing it in the future. In which case, are my kids that I haven't had yet tennis stars? Because I have this feeling this top coat is great oh shook the wrong thing I shook the, anyway just look at the shine that this stuff adds. I recommend you don't hold back on this part, but be forewarned that this stuff is much finer than regular spray paint. It's extremely noxious, and no one should ever, under any circumstances, use it without a mask. If you're finding that your paint strokes aren't even enough, here's a tip. And then just circle back and repeat. It may not seem very fun, but painting's not supposed to be. <laughs> Okay, now I'm about to do something that may ruin everything that I've done. I'm gonna try to really lightly do these sparkles misted over the front of this and then do another layer of lace. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls know the importance of UV protection. It turned out better than I expected. Somebody likes my new paint job. The step, I think we missed a few steps. This would probably be step seven, untaping. I probably should take some nail polish remover and clean up a few spots. But that doesn't sound fun. So let's paint something else pink. No, 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 yes. This is a Yamaha Vino scooter from, you guessed it, Facebook Marketplace. I put it through all the same tortures that I inflicted upon my car. No playing favorites here. I really took my time with the taping and tack clothing because those were the only steps that allowed for Gary and to hang out outside with me. This is why I bought a house. So that the most foolish people in town can come and engage in foolishness nothing okay so i'm trying to decide what to do about the bumper jj thinks that i should leave it black and courtney thinks that i should paint it pink so you know what that means put it to a instagram vote jj do you think the people voted 79 percent in favor of pink because they like courtney better than they like you no because they all have terrible taste maybe you're the problem you you should get tested for covid because one of the symptoms is no taste <laughs> So it's 3 a.m. in Editingville, if you can't tell, and what you're watching here is me utilizing my iPad to trace the 90s Barbie logo and then subsequently the 1959 slash current Barbie logo onto some sticky vinyl. The next day I set to work filming my ad for Mudwater. Is this too meta? Anyway, here's some deleted scenes and why I deleted them. 1. Releasing doves at my dad's memorial. The dove kept coming back to me. 2. Dumping my coffee out on the floor. Too irresponsible. Actually, I think I left that part in. 3. Me being comforted at my dad's memorial. By my dad. I couldn't actually put my finger on what was wrong with that one. There's some people swimming in the water and I really hope they don't think I was throwing real ashes. Then it, oops, then it was time to paint my scooter pink. For best paint mixing practices, I recommend listening to headbanging music, such as This Little Light of Mine and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So I know 
realize this video has been a lot of time lapse and not a lot of face to face, and you probably have a hankering to hear me tell a story. When I worked at a craft store, there was a new coworker once. It was her first day, and she was in the break room like every time I walked in to get something. Like she took so many breaks, and I was like, I see you in here a lot. She told me that she had special needs that had to be accommodated for. She had narcolepsy. I thought narcolepsy was the same thing as necrophilia, which it's not. Don't look up what necrophilia is. But no, she had narcolepsy, which is when you can't keep yourself from falling asleep. And I'm just sitting here in the break room thinking, my goodness, woman, why would you tell me this? And what has that got to do with needing extra breaks? Which, by the way, she's drinking Red Bull on all those breaks, and so it all makes sense in hindsight. Anyway, she eventually got fired for her condition, but not the narcolepsy. She got fired for her kleptomania. Crap, I kind of painted my invisible. So I guess I ran, I've run out of things to say now. After successfully painting and glittering my scooter, I asked my dad and Joe to give me lots of compliments while I applied my DIY decal. Wow. That's amazing. Whoa, wow. You should be a surgeon. Whoa, whoa. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Now here you see us priming the bumper using miniature hands because many hands, hands make, make light, light work. work. I'm sorry guys. I let you down. I thought that would be cool. Uh, Step 10. Decorating. I wanted to practice my flame making skills, so I started on my helmet. I freehanded one side with chalk, then taped around it, then I changed into something more masculine and did the other side. Just kidding, Joe took over so I could have a latte, but first I brought it out to have him spit in it. Then I painted the flames with light pink at the base and dark pink at the ends. Is it still in frame? Yeah. Yes, Ella. Totally still in frame. Oh, have you guys met my niece Ella? She is one of the coolest people I know. You can tell she's cool because she's like easily embarrassed. <sighs> Really though, she's actually insanely cool. She was staying at my house along with her brothers, Hudson and Miles. Don't ask me how old they are because for the life of me, I could not get a straight answer. Hudson, how old are you? Good. Miles, how old are you? Everything. Miles? How old are you, Miles? Nothing to count hard. No more wild card. In Miles' defense, he was pretty traumatized from having to share a house with Garion for a couple days. Ah! Ella, how old are you? Anyway, back to the project. Here is the long-awaited, much-anticipated helmet reveal. Now to just replicate that success on the car. Spoiler alert, it doesn't end up looking even remotely similar. Speaking of not looking similar, I decided to only decorate one side of my car and leave the other side blank, taking inspiration from this iconic Toy Story 2 scene. Oh, you like Annie. Oh, she's an artist. Now, if I'm being completely honest, my first attempt at car flames looked more like a creature that would be on Stranger Things. So the flames on the car turned out horrid. So let's copy the same technique on the scooter. I spent almost an hour and a half methodically laying out the tape around the flames, pressing down as I went and then double checking everything to make sure that nothing would bleed. Then it rained. Correction, it stormed, briefly and violently, and I was left to repair the now sagging, soggy tape job. But it turned out looking pretty all right. Maybe because I blew a couple handfuls of glitter onto the paint while it was still drying. Yet another process which Garion had to watch through the window. It's sad because you can tell how much time he spent looking out the window this month. Look at his little pile of poo. Does it not put you in the mood for spinach dip? I cut some mini flames out of that sticky vinyl to put on the front of my scooter. It definitely won't last long. Then I kind of started over with the flames on my car and I felt like it was going really well and that I had earned a break so I spent that break reading about this woman who gave birth in the ocean. Okay now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Makara, why didn't you tape off your headlights? Well I had something special planned for my headlights. Something very special indeed. So then, when you turn the headlights on, well I'll just show you. Look at that! This is me redoing the flames on my car. This is me blowing glitter on my car. This is me trying to capture the essence of that one Barbie's face on my car. For this, we used spray paint with paintbrushes, as well as paint markers. I think this was my favorite part of the project. Wait, no, my favorite part was probably my neighbors checking in periodically to see our progress. It seemed word got out among the neighborhood what I was up to, and people started coming from all over my block. One going so far as to pull up a chair and watch us paint. I don't know, it made me feel like I was interesting. But you know, actually, the best part was all the quality time I got to spend with my dad. Whether he was working on the car with me or sitting in a chair nearby, it's always a good day when I know he's around. Step 112, personal touches. Okay, so I took Garen inside because I want to surprise him by painting a picture of him and also because I'm using spray paint, which could very well kill him. It's cute. Like, ironic, right? I'm painting him out of something that is deadly to him. It's like if he painted me out of gluten. <laughs> I have more space to fill and I've run out of ideas, so I think we're gonna ask Instagram and I will draw whatever the seventh option is. How's that sound? Eighth? Okay. So I posted the question to my story. Oh, she is so pretty. Then check the results, counted to eight, and wisdom tooth. Okay, so that's done, but I still have more room to fill. So, Dad, pick another number. 38. Smaller. 16. Okay. Yeah, I uh, should have stuck with 38. How oh, am I supposed to draw P? I guess where there's a will, there's a we. That evening, I had flames that I was finally happy with, aside from this mermaid tail, which I just touched up with a paintbrush. Now here, you will see my dad sketching the 1970s Barbie logo. It's an idea that I said that I was like, oh, that would be kind of cool. Oh, but wait, never mind. I'd rather just have the card 
card were blank. But he was like strangely insistent about it and kept bringing it up. So I was like, oh, okay, if you sketch it, I'll paint it. And I'm glad he did because it ended up being my favorite part of the car. Side note, my house is pretty much a revolving door of visitors. Some kids came over to use my hot tub and then Ruthie came over to show me her paint by number. I had her put those skills to the back of my car and the kids helped her. Then I spent like two hours edging all the flames in white. <laughs> After my dad, Gary, and I finished up the 70s logo, dang, that looks so good, I took another doodle suggestion. Then the headlights needed changed out. Like, I don't want to risk summoning him. I'm not a big Robert Pattinson fan. Now, replacing the lights required complex physical labor. And so, wouldn't you know it, I worked hard exercising my mechanical skills while my dad just kind of messed around. Like, not trying to badmouth him, but my dad's fooling around was so ridiculous that Gary couldn't even stand to look at him. But I mean, it's okay. I'm super used to it, and it was easy. I mean, machine things aren't hard. And you know, tool using. Toolery, if you will, is so gratifying. Look at the difference these headlights made. I slapped a few finishing touches on the old back of Rooney, then had a meeting with some friends. I think we were supposed to be wedding planning for Ashley's wedding, but we just ended up practicing our secret friendship handshake all night. JJ's fine, by the way. We didn't tighten around his neck or anything. Never choke your friends. I know that's something Gen Z loves to do. But... Ready to vacuum out the inside? So that's right. We're taking on the inside last. Because I tackled the car in order of priorities. And like the ancient proverb says, it's what's on the outside that counts. Now you're probably wondering how to remove those pesky, aesthetic lowering bird poop stains on the seats of your car. Here's a hack. Take some butter from the fridge, rub it on the stain like so, then order some seat covers. When the seat covers come in, simply cover the stain with those. That's perfect. Now to just keep him from staining these. I guess I could cover them in like plastic bags or something, but that would really ruin the aesthetic. I should get seat covers, like to protect these. But I don't want something ugly. I want something kind of fancy. Yes, these. But then what if he poops on those? I guess I could cover them in like a plastic bag or something. That would really ruin the aesthetic. Secret. So I finished my car and I was pretty excited. Then I texted a picture of it to my friend Josh and he was like, Wow, that's a lot of stickers. Those aren't stickers, I painted them myself. And I really want to make sure everybody knows that. So yeah, it was a little prideful, but I wrote that I painted it myself, and but I also said that dad helped. Um, and now I would like to offer this footage in response to all the people who ask how I keep Gary in from flying away. It's nothing I do. He's just insanely clingy. Believe me, I try to set him free all the time. Well, now that we're done with- Oh no, my dash is full of smoke. Gotcha. It's just clouds. Step five. Hire a professional best friend. Hmm, that's nice. Step six. Barbie heads. You'll need a lot of these. And by the way, the heads now are much harder to pull off than they used to be. I guess generations of evil brothers forced them to make an engineering change. I utilized my heads for a variety of purposes, but we'll get to that later. Now look at this. Well, now listen to this. Can you hum your favorite song? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this cute little poseable Barbie looks really cute on the back of my scooter, so I pardon you. Actually, I think I just knighted her. In any case, she was super excited. Just look at how she flaunted her body to her headless friends. Have I mentioned I love this top coat? Just look at how it brings life and restores shine to old, dull things. Kind of like an old maid after she discovers eHarmony. So I just took my car to brunch downtown. And on the way there, I had this thought as I was in my car, looking around at everyone, staring at my car. What if I ever go to a funeral? And like I'm going from the funeral home to the cemetery in the procession of vehicles, and I'm in this. Like, I'm gonna have to paint it black. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't that a little overkill? To wear that to brunch? To which I say, no, I don't think so. Everyone dresses dressed like this for brunch. We're nearing the finish line, ladies and gentlemen. Just a few more layers of top coat. Maybe a little sparkle here. A little of this. I don't know, is this too, like, Game of thrones -y? I wouldn't know. I've never actually seen the show. But look at this idea Courtney had. She wanted to put the body on the windshield wiper so it would move back and forth. Isn't she disturbed? Step 10. Fire your best friend. Bye, Courtney. I'll miss your shoulder rubs. Hi, a new best friend. Wanna go for a grand reveal? Jump, Jump in. in. This car is pink. Her name is Erica. Or should I say, was Erica. This car has not three, but four wheels. Not impressed? Well then check out these custom seat covers. And by custom, I mean mass produced, but handpicked by me. So basically, they're designer. You've heard of furry dice. And you've heard of the Spice Girls. But have you heard of the Dice Girls? These are my friends. Or should I say, were my friends. Never double-cross Barbie. Hi there. I'm a hardcore biker chick. And these are my wheels. This is the 
other side of my wheels. I'm part of a tight-knit group of friends that some people might call a gang. You don't want to know what this tattoo means. I own this road. Look, I'm British. This is my special biker hat. Oh no, it's on fire. Gotcha. Watch me put my hat on. Watch me drive away. I wrecked my scooter. I have pictures of myself hanging up all over inside my car. Wanna see? Hi. 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 My dad and I painted all of these stickers ourselves. Still not impressed? How about now? Still not impressed? How about now? How about now? How about now? Now? Please be impressed. How about now? How about now? I've never had to put one of these out on my own before. Call mom. Hey, baby. hey mom, how do you put fire batons out? I'll do one mails real fast until they go out. Do one mails, she says. Oh my gosh, that's why you should always call your mom. Now I want to see if I can fit in on Redneck Row. And so, perched atop my scooter, I followed my dad who was in the Barbie mobile to Main Street, where I absolutely did not fit in. But it didn't matter because I felt very fully and comfortably myself. Made it. Most excitingly, I got to make the acquaintance of a few of my followers. I'm Caroline. I gave them the honor of naming this Barbie. What's her name? Bernadette. <laughs> I'm Haley. What's your favorite color? Haley. Oh, and this is Alaska. She didn't necessarily know who I was, but she's a big Barbie fan. I love your scooter. I asked her to say that. Oh yeah, and then I met this guy. Hey Barbie, wanna go for a ride? <laughs> Sure, kid! I guess he must have been a big Barbie fan too. I should mention, if you're worried about Gary and being stuck in a cage, don't worry, he was only stuck there till he complimented me. I really <laughs> that was good enough. In general, I was just trying to keep him feeling safe from all the... all of this. Yeah, it didn't take me long to realize this really wasn't my scene. It was really loud and smoky, but you know, even so... What a rush. I found out that my car is a really big hit with kids. Hey guys, do I have the best car ever? You. Out. You shook your head no. Out. Mm, get you a man that loves you like she loves this car, am I right? It's also really amusing to see every pedestrian that I cross mouth the words as my car goes by and they're reading it. In summary, this project was awesome. I think I enjoyed absolutely every step of the process. Easy for you to say. You're not the one that's been editing the same video for 32 hours straight without any sleep. So the overarching point is, why the heck not? So enjoy some deleted scenes. Please ignore everything you see and hear for the next hour. Thank you so much! There's a dog staring at me. And this is someone else? No. This Would you rather trade bodies with President Joe Biden for a year or be handcuffed to a monkey for a year? Handcuffed to Joe Biden. Because that wasn't an option, but that's what you want, that's what you want. Finally, all my vehicles are pink. Oh crap. Why are you still here? I'm done. I'm done. It's currently 3 a.m., 24 hours from the last time I checked in, saying that it was 3 a.m. It's been 40 hours since I've tasted sweet sleep, and I'm about to go to bed now. Dang it, now we have to edit this. There. Now I'm actually done. Crap.